Rolling Stone Coming so back all of a sudden. So how many of you think that the product you're examining? I went to every Jack in the Box store. <laughs> <laughs> I got hella mad. Yeah. So I didn't pass Except out the salt. So the egg finally makes my house. They all came from things that had to right? So how many of these have genetically modified corn as a probable ingredient? Okay. So you guys, what, what did you guys have there? Soybean and the sugar beets. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you probably noticed, uh, corn, <coughs> uh, basically the processed variety in terms of uh, either corn starch or high fructose corn syrup, is a pretty much ubiquitous ingredient uh, in a lot of processed foods. This is closely followed uh, by soybean oil. All right, so <coughs> controversies with GMOs. So there's a lot of uh, you know rancor and partisanship uh, you know about this topic. Um, so I want to talk about um, some of these controversies. So the first one, there's a lot of people that suggest that GMOs might be bad uh, for human health, um, and so the evidence is pretty unequivocal on this, in that there's no reason. That makes sense, right? I mean, they're kind of doing a you know billion-person field trial, right, over the last ten years. Uh, there's been no no evidence of any any health issues. Yeah. But how did that? Okay, so maybe this is a marketing question and not actually a biology question. How is that so popular then? Like that, like the no GMO. Like I I remember this Chipotle thing. Like how is this such a pop culture thing if there's absolutely no backing to it? Like how did that take? Not everyone's had an excellent biology class. <laughs> but like, why does it, if, if, if you're not seeing people, draw, are there people, I mean like, what good is it doing marketing? That's what I'm asking. What, what good, is, is it just creating a gimmick for gimmick's sake? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of people that, you know, either they don't understand this or they've, you know, read misinformation about this. And so that worries them. And so now maybe they'll go and spend an extra dollar to get a burrito at Chipotle instead of at Green Burrito. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've even, um, in coffee, for example, where there are certain um, aspects of the industry where there is fair trade, there is organic, then there is non-fair trade, non-organic. Uh, like 
Starbucks is a really good example of a company that claimed to say, hey, we're moving towards like organic or fair trade coffee. But then the issue is, <laughs> sorry to those who do work at Starbucks, um, if you look into it, I mean, like, they were, they were still heavily claiming that, like, their product was organic when the year before, only 8% of their product was actually organic. And then between, like, the original, like, establishment of, like, the fair trade or organic um, organization, there was, like, a controversy that broke off to create one very conservative um, traditional branch and then one that was kind of loosening and relaxing some of their standards and then companies, some bigger, some possibly Starbucks, um, do then basically partner and create a custom fit organic for their product. And that's something that really concerns me. Yeah, so one thing to keep in mind with a lot of these sort of definitions is that they are, you know, they're, they're legal definitions that are put together by different groups for different purposes. There's not a scientific definition of what organic is, right? That's something you know we've made up for our own purposes. So you know you bring up kind of a good point. I think coffee is a great example of you know you have fair trade, free trade, sustainable, and all, all these various things. So we actually need to look into it and see you know what does it mean? How is it how is it enforced? Um, but no known health issues with with current GMOs on the market. So a big point that I really want to make is that there's no reason. is a problem, but we could certainly make something that's dangerous with this process, right? So I could transform uh, cyanide beans into some corn, right? And then that would, that would kill everybody that ate it, and that would be dangerous, right? <laughs> so what I really want you to do is, is sort of, you know, take a, the extra step of not asking, is it GMO, but what GMO is it? And then assess the risk. stuff you know goes into making corn as cheaply as possible which allows us to make burritos as cheaply as possible right which are certainly probably not very good for the general health of the population right that's kind of separate from the gm issue okay. so yeah i was just thinking it'd be interesting how they didn't know much about it when they introduced it it's just like a small one mm -hmm. and also the ethical groups and insurance companies back in Monsanto that have nothing to do with the actual health So you'll see you know, when you have these protests, it's often aimed specifically at Monsanto. And they're a, a big player in the industry, but they're far from the only one. Um, and so part of that is because Monsanto has made some pretty dumb public relations decisions uh, over the years. Um, so in particular, um, they were going after uh, farmers that were using their genetically modified seeds without a license. Um, so to use this you know, expensive trade, you have to pay Monsanto money uh, you know, use the product, right? So these farmers were didn't pay the license, um, and the company caught them uh, and then sued them. And so this uh, sort of played in the media as Monsanto going after family farmers, um, which was not entirely true, uh, but the way they did it was very heavy-handed and pretty aggressive. And so they, for example, established a hotline for farmers to rat out their uh, which doesn't exactly you know, give out the nice, cuddly corporate persona, right? Um, that's part of the reason. 